welcome to the corner challenge. The rules are, they each have 10 balls, 5 on each foot, and they get 50 points each time a ball goes in net, whether it bounces or not. So meet the players. We've got Anthony Dudley, goal scorer, striker, professional footballer now. Next up we've got Jake Durham, midfielder, winger. And then lastly we've got Khalid Mohammed plays in the centre midfield. All got good feet, good courses, so we'll see. Right, Jake Durham. Oh, miss. Here's second one. Can he do it? No. Not this time. Oh, no. Side net in. Off go. Can he do it this time? Oh, no. Lastly, can you get any points? No, no points. Khalid Mohammed. Let's see what he can do. Oh, yeah, there we go. First try, first point, 50 points. He's on his way. Can you go again? No, no luck this time. Third try, can you get 100 points? No. Definitely not easy. Looks easier than it is. Khaled's not doing bad. Can he do it? Can he get it? Oh, that's 100 points. And on to Anthony Dudley. What can he do? He scores goals for fun. Can he get the ball in the net from a corner? That's the question. Oh. Third try. Can you get one in? Oh, there he is. 50 points. And again. 100 points. Oh, he's got the hang of it now. Can you get 150? Oh, yes, he can. Scores on the doors. We've got Anthony Dudley. 150 in the lead at half time. Jake Durham. With no points. Khaled Mohammed with a hundred. So Dudley steps up, he's in the lead. Can he add to his telly? Let's see. But he's still got a couple more left, let's see. Next steps up Khalid, he needs two goals to take the lead here. Let me hand over to co-commentator, youth team coach Ryan Kidd. Let's see what he has to say. Jay Durham, will he reach? Will he reach? How many Weetabix has he had this morning? I hope he's had three. He might just get there. No, he's had two. He's definitely just had two. Might have even had one and a half of them. Here we go. Oh, he's got it airborne. Well done, Jay. Got it airborne. He's right for it, though. He's waiting for it. Oh, it's clear. Threaten the Oh dear. No chance. Zero points for Jake Durham, so 
Here are the scores, final scores, 150 points for Anthony Dudley. Jake Durham with zero points, I'll be disappointed with that. And Khalid Mohammed with 150 points. So we've got a draw. Khalid, Anthony, well done. So, what's your role at the club and what does it involve? My role at Berry Football Club yeah. is Head of Education and Welfare. Okay. So, it's quite a multifaceted role really. Yeah. Um, initially, my role is to ensure that the academy young players yeah. are doing well at school. Okay. In no way can their education be disadvantaged by being yeah. part of Berry Football Club. And that's what my role is, okay. to liaise with the school, to liaise with parents, and I do that on a termly basis. So that's for the under 16s. And if there are any issues that arise, so for example, if punctuality becomes an issue, I can liaise with the school and with home and try and find ways forward to improve that. With the youth squad, that's slightly different because they're apprentices and they're based mainly at the football club. But we work with Berry College yeah. And they do a BTEC Level 3 Sport Performance and Excellence course. Yeah. So again, it's a liaison role, talking to the college, making sure that they're doing all the work that they're supposed to be doing, yeah. instead of just playing football, because it's really important, obviously, that they achieve those qualifications. Yeah, education is really important, yeah. so I'm guessing you agree with that. Don't Absolutely, you? I do, yeah. 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 So, how, how important is education, do you think? Fundamental to me, education yeah. is really powerful because education gives you a choice. And for footballers, it's no different to any young person exactly. that you know they may not actually make it as a footballer, so they're going to have to have a plan B. Yeah. So even if a player is given a professional contract by the age of, of 20, 95% of those players will no longer be in football. Yeah. So it's imperative that those youngsters do the very best that they can in terms of gaining qualifications because it gives them something, something else to move on to should, should their football career, for whatever reason, fail. You know, they can become injured, um, they may not be offered you know, a professional contract. So I know they want to live that dream, yeah. but for a lot of young players, that dream is not going to come true. So they really need something to fall back Absolutely on. Absolutely, yeah. to, to fall back on. So they must have a plan. They must have a plan B, and that's part of the LFE's uh, process of thinking, making sure that we monitor very carefully that our young players are keeping up with their work and attending well and being punctual at school. Exactly, because there is a lot of players out there that soon to go through like a college system, well through the system, they kind of haven't got anything that they want to do or anything like that. That's right, it's about making sure that they've something to progress to exactly. and making sure that I've got, it's, their, it's their next step in their life basically. Yeah. yeah. So how important is it to make, make sure players, because you've got youth players from other areas come in, how important is it to make sure that they feel welcome and kind of getting them in the right kind of place where they live and that kind well, of Well, again, that, and again, that's a welfare issue, isn't yeah. it? So in addition to education, that's, that, it, that is critical yeah. because if you are happy in your environment, if you are happy and comfortable in yourself, and if you're happy and comfortable with your coaches and your teammates, then you're in the best position to be able to yeah. perform yeah both in terms of your football and your skills as well as your education. Yeah. So it's about making sure that they are familiar with their surroundings, that they're comfortable in their accommodation, that they are safe in their accommodation. Um, they know how to get around the facilities, they know everybody's names, they know where to go to if they're in trouble or they just need a simple question answering. So making them feel very comfortable and safe and secure will also contribute to them being really confident in what they're doing. So yes, that's, that's critical when they first come to the club. Uh, 
And then finally, how has the move to Carrington affected education for the youth team? Um, well, at the moment, it hasn't had that much of, of a difference, to be perfectly honest. But next year, it, it may do. So the difference there will be, hopefully, that some of the education will be delivered here at Carrington. And the difference it will make is that there's more time here to also then be playing, to be yeah. playing football. Okay. And to be able to play in facilities such as this, yeah. to me, it's all about inspiration and aspiration. You know, if you can't perform to the best of your ability in these surroundings and these facilities, yeah. then, which are, which are, you know, with, amongst the best in the country, then I don't know what else that they can do. But it's about, it's about making sure, again, that they're in a safe environment, but in an environment where they're going to prosper and develop and to be able to perform as well as they possibly can. And this place does it. Ten League Two games without a win for Southend now, but they're still clinging on to the final playoff spot. Only lost one of the last four away games. Now Barry and they're growing in confidence. Here they come again, men in the middle. Awkward bounce. Bentley gets the touch, and then it's blocked away. It was an important touch. From White with the ball, and now Hurst taking over. Kevin Hurst wasn't far away. Straker. McNulty is staying very tight to him. Bounces off Straker and comes back to him again. Has to settle for the corner. Looks like it will be the left foot of Chris Hussey here to take. It is. Swings it in. Hold it harmlessly behind. It's a good ball in. The team can make the breakthrough though at the moment. Ambitious effort. Here comes Southend again, really starting to apply the pressure now. It was a chance for Barry Cor. The substitute had found a little bit of space, but puts it too close to the keeper. Now the referee's attention here has been drawn across by his assistant to an incident, I think, involving Barry Cor. I see Lee Collins here is calling across. It was off the ball. And it's a straight red card for Barry Cor. South End here have gone down to uh, 10 men for the last eight minutes. I think it was for the, the clash with Vaselli. After some consultation, the referee has shown Core the straight red. Free kick fired in. Punched away. That is going to be that. The deadlock remains to the finish here. A point apiece. South End nil, Berry nil. Kick Lane was the venue as League One strugglers Berry entertained a South End side unbeaten in six. It was the Shakers that took the lead against their League Two opponents. Ryan Cresswell, the guilty man, as he appended Troy Hewitt in the penalty area just past the half hour mark. That gave on loan Wolves striker Matt Doherty the chance to open his account for Berry, an opportunity he duly took. But that lead lasted only 10 minutes as the informed Gavin Tomlin netted his sixth goal in just four games with this superb solo effort. His eighth goal of the campaign, all told. 
In a thrilling encounter, it was Paul Sturrock Shrimpers who looked the more likely to progress to round three. Berry was saved twice by the woodwork. Former Swindon duo Michael Timlin and Barry Corr hitting a post each as they searched for the winner. But it finished 1-1 and both teams will have to do it all again when they meet in Essex.